In this overview, we will go over the redesign of five of the already existing apps in DHIS2. This includes the following, the Users app, the Import-Export app, the Messages app, Data Quality app, and the Data Administration app. While these apps have been redesigned to provide a more consistent user experience, these design changes have also improved how certain actions within the system are performed. Let us have a look at some of these new changes in DHIS 2.30. Let us start with the Data Quality app. In DHIS 2.29 and previous versions, the interface was not updated to be in line with the other apps within DHIS 2. In DHIS 2.30, we can see that the app has now been updated with a new user interface. All of the operations within this app remain the same, However, they have now been updated to reflect a more consistent design in line with the other apps in DHIS2. As an example, we can review validation rule analysis. We can see that the entire app reflects the new interface that has been implemented across this application. This is also reflected in the details option, which is now significantly easier to read when compared to previous versions of DHIS2. The messaging app in DHIS 2.30 has also been redesigned. In this case, we will see how the design reflects improved functionality and user interaction within the app itself. If we review the app in DHIS 2.29 and other previous versions, we can see that all of the messages are in one location. This includes system-generated messages, identifying problems with the system itself, validation notifications, identifying areas in which the data may need to be reviewed, tickets that need to be solved, as well as direct messages that may have been sent to the user. In DHIS 2.30, the Messages app has been redesigned with a new user interface. Not only is the interface more consistent with other apps in DHIS 2, but we can see the messages have now been divided into four categorizations. This makes it easier to find the message you need. We can take a look at this by reviewing the inbox within the Messages app. In addition to these four categorizations, we can also search for messages within each of these individual categories. This was a feature that was not present in previous versions of DHIS2. We can also add additional users to the conversations within the Messages app directly. This was not possible in previous versions of DHIS2. We can also have a look at the Import-Export app. In DHIS230, all of the functionality that was present in previous versions of DHIS2 is retained. A number of new options are available for metadata import in particular that were only available previously using the API. For more on the new functionality included here, please have a look at the documentation. Next, let's have a look at the Data Administration app. In addition to the design changes that you will see within the app, note that a couple functionalities have been moved around. First, you will notice that the analytics tables are now available as an option within Data Administration. This has been moved from the Reports app, where it is no longer an option. You will also notice that two options, SQL View and Locale, are no longer present within Data Administration as of 2.30. We can now find these options within the Maintenance application in the Other category. Lastly, we can review the Users app. This app has received a significant overhaul, not only in its interface, but also to streamline the process of creating users and user roles due to changes in the sharing model. Let's start by creating a new user role. Previously, creating a new user role involved finding each individual user permission within a single list. This could often be a bit difficult if the administrator was not sure of the exact name of the permission within the system. We can see in the new users app the way we add permissions has been changed. Authorities have been grouped together in categories. Additionally, we can see a tabular approach to adding specifics such as public or private roles has been taken, rather than having to individually select these from the long list of permissions. In order to accommodate the new sharing model, a number of previous authorities, particularly related to Tracker, have been removed as these have been replaced with the new sharing settings introduced in 2.29. This should streamline the creation of user roles through the user interface going forward. Next, let's have a look at creating a user. The process and functionality of creating a user in DHIS 2.30 has not changed significantly. If we select Show More Options within this part of the app, we will see, however, that assigning search organization units for Tracker has now been integrated into the user interface when creating a new user. 
In previous versions of DHIS2, this was done on a separate screen. However, it is now more integrated into the process of creating a new user. We can see that there have been some significant changes to several of the applications in DHIS230. Interface changes have reflected changes to the design and workflow and are in place in order to improve the user's experience when working with the system. For more detail on each feature, please have a look at the documentation. If you have any questions about any of the concepts we've discussed in this overview, please do not hesitate to contact us.